Hi everybody, this is Oleg. Welcome to Working Preparedness. In this video, I want to talk to you about once again bugging out. But the main thing of the bugging out scenario is who is going to be bugging out. So I just want to elaborate on that a little bit. And uh, this is just purely my opinion. I'm obviously no expert in this no one else no one is because you know we haven't been to a situation where people would be bugging out yet so no one really knows how it's gonna go down how is it gonna play out but here is some of my thoughts hopefully they're useful in my opinion when there will be time to bug out when something really crazy will happen nuclear war or maybe civil war will break out to the point where bullets will be flying day and night in your city and it will be just be so unsafe that you will be safer in the woods taking your chances to survive whatever the reason is when the time will be to go here is what I think who will go in my opinion you know they say there is 5% of preppers and uh, I would like to think those 5% have a plan when to bug out where to bug out hopefully most of us who are prepper minded have plan A and plan B actually because you know you cannot have just one plan you never know what can happen and you may need that plan B. Number two, the rest of the people, 95%, maybe maybe there's more preppers that no one knows about. Maybe there's 10% preppers. But let's say 90% of people, they simply do not have a plan, let alone bug out bags. Because if you gotta bug out in most scenarios, it's gonna be minutes of throwing things that you already have at ready in your car and go. And those things are most basic tools like folding saw, small axe, you know, a couple of multi tools, some rope, some paracord, you know, means to make fire with just some most basic things of course a tent uh, if you're lucky if you're bugging out with a small cargo trailer or mm, little tiny RV that you can pull behind your truck or SUV then you're lucky because if you find some some lost road some logging road in the woods you can survive in your trailer if not you gotta have a tent so uh, you gotta load your car with all these goodies in just essential for your survival your tent your basic tools as much as possible medicine because you don't know when you're gonna come home you don't know if you're coming back home period it depends on the severity of the event if it's prolonged war maybe by the time you get back your house will be destroyed or won't even exist or maybe there was some natural disaster some hurricane blew through and uh, completely destroyed your house and with all this COVID going on and everything else who knows if your insurance company will will pay you for your house if you live in an apartment you don't even have that option so you have to load your car with tent with medicine with tools with meals of means of self-defense and or hunting with because you're gonna have to provide food that's gonna be really hard and the rest of the space in your car depends how big is your car you gotta have a couple of five gallon cans with gasoline 
because chances are some gas stations will be closed or maybe all of them will be closed and what you want to do is get as far as possible from the city you know once again my opinion uh, i think if you get 30 40 50 miles away from the city and away from the major highway it's probably going to be good enough and safe enough with probably not a lot of people around but you never know the further you get away the better off you are the more resources you're going to have the less people so um, you need to try to get away the, f the further the better so and the rest of your space in your car you should fill up with your food your canned goods your um, rice your pasta your Excuse me, freeze dry food if you have it. Filled up with already bottled water because on the fly you won't have time to look for the stream and try to filter and drink the water. So you gotta have a few cases, a couple of cases of water at least for a couple of days you can drink until you find your place where you're gonna ride out the apocalypse where you're gonna you know put your camp hopefully you can find place near some stream or some lake or or a river so uh, basically your car will be full with these supplies essential for your survival and I tell you I don't know too many people who are truly ready who have their supplies ready by the door in the closet ideally that in a minute's notice you could put all your stuff in 10-15 minutes pack it nicely in your car and go me personally if I had to do it it will probably take me an hour to gather all my stuff all my essential stuff and load and go I have a couple of storage units within my apartment building and some of my stuff is in the storage, some, some of it is at home. Uh, it is all packed and ready, but still it's in a few different places and it would, it would take me that long to get everything out, load and go if I had to, which I think is not bad. Unless nuclear bomb will explode nearby and I survive I think an hour is probably not a bad time frame to get ready in my opinion but once again you gotta have your stuff ready and most people don't you gotta have a plan and most people don't and I'm willing to bet most of people if they get in their car their gas tank is probably gonna be below half which means they probably won't get very far so um, for these reasons you know I think that once you bug out it won't be too many people bugging out it will, if you live in a city, it will still be in thousands. But everybody's gonna go different directions. Um, and of course, those thousands will thin out pretty quickly. 10, 20 miles, people are gonna just stop because they're gonna think they're gonna return back to their homes in the next couple of days after their quick camping trip. But if you're a prepper, you have means of going further you have extra gas in your car and you have back roads and you have plan B so I think uh, in my opinion and once again I could be wrong but in my opinion if you get far enough you probably will not be overrun by other people who are trying to do the same thing you know, I've lived in Pacific Northwest for 25 years and uh, of course every area is different.
Every state is different, population is different, but I'm using, I live in Portland, I work a lot in Seattle, and I've been around both states pretty much everywhere. And in my opinion, let's just use Portland and or Seattle. If you get 50 miles away from either city, like in, if you're in Portland, you go towards the beach, you know, towards the ocean, you'll find plenty of mountains with logging roads that no one's using. And don't forget one more thing, very important to your essential tools is What is this called? Uh, the tool you cut locks with. The um, lock breaker. I forgot the actual name for it. But the, the one that you chop locks with. Or chain link, chain link fence with. Because it's a very important tool to have on hand in case many of those logging roads they have uh, a, a gate you know you, you stop by you see the logging road and I've seen them I've seen lots of them in Oregon you, you there is a just simple metal gate and there's a lock I don't know who has locks to them somebody does but here's what I would do I would break the lock go in and have a couple of locks on yourself to lock it back up behind you. Number one, it won't look suspicious if somebody is there. Number two, if somebody else tries to get in, chances are they won't have tools to break the lock with. And you won't have no one else who could possibly be a threat to you or who could fight for the same resources okay I'm gonna conclude this video I hope you find it useful if you do please share it and please like this video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the right corner on the bottom and hit the bell next to it it will help my channel tremendously and we'll see you in the next upload thank you for watching Bye-bye.